L'Oreal Faustin and Deshaun Johnson are suing their former friend and roommate, Jasmine Stiegel, for unpaid rent, a broken memorial, and vehicle damages. Court come to order? Be seated, please. Hello, Judge. Case number 1138, Foster Johnson versus Stigall. Thank you. You're welcome. Your last name is? Foston. Ms. Foston, this young man is your boyfriend. He is the father of a young child that you have. Yes. The defendant was a friend of yours. The two of you decided to room together and to get an apartment together. Correct. In what month and year? Um, August of 2020. Anybody have a copy of that lease? I do. I'd like to see it. Case is a relatively simple one. I will outline it. Things didn't work out between at least the two of you, probably the three of you, thank you. You allege that the defendant breached the lease by moving out. You say the day that she did, in fact, move her things out for the second time, she purposely damaged your car by sideswiping it. And during that same period of time, she broke a vase, some sort of a vase that had sentimental value because it belonged to your boyfriend. Yes, ma'am. Those are the three things that we're here for. And the sentimental value of the vase is really not something that I'm getting involved in. Does he have any other interest in this case? Um. Did he own the car? Oh, he is co-owner of the car. He is co-owner of the car. Well, then he can stand there. And I do have a Shh. video. Shh. Okie dokie. Well, this was important. This is important for me to read. So you signed this lease. Lorio faced on. Raise your hand. Boston. Jasmine Stiegel. Who is that? Right here. Those are the two people that are allowed to be in the apartment. Right. That's what it says. List the name of the residents who will live in the apartment. Where did he come from? Um, we were staying together. He was going through something legally, and at first we weren't going to move together. Um, yada, 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 yada. This, this lease was signed July 20th, 2020. So you moved in on... The 9th of August, I believe. Okay. Did you have a discussion with the plaintiff, your friend, about the boyfriend moving in? Um, she did say that he was gonna come live with. I didn't know that. No, 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 don't tell me what you didn't know. I asked you about a discussion. When you moved in, the landlord didn't know he was gonna be there. Right. But did you know that he was gonna be there? I knew he was there all along, but I didn't know he was coming with. No, I thought it was just gonna be me and her. And her oh, daughter. that's my question. Yes. So let's just try to not have any attitude here but mine. Okay. All right? Yeah, that's fine. Great. When the two of you decided to rent this apartment together, did she have a child? Yes. How old was that child? She was, um, so she was about eight months. And you knew who her father was? I knew of him, but I didn't know him. But you knew who he was? I met him, like, physically, and, like, I had first seen him, like, when he came to the apartment. But you had never seen him before? No. That's a lie. So. Sorry. Never seen that man before. If she saw you before, sir, you were forgettable. <laughs> and her, with her knowledge. I, that didn't require an answer. It was my punchline. <laughs> <laughs> Bottom line is, when you moved in, it was your understanding that she was not with him. Right. When did he show up? The day that we were all moving in. Is that when you first saw him? Yes. Now, so that I understand it and believe it, Tell me why his name wasn't listed here as a person who was going to be in the apartment. Um, Not an um. Look at me and explain that to me. I didn't want him on the lease at the time. It doesn't say he has to be on the lease. It says he was a person who was going to live in the apartment. Right. Um, I did tell the management company or Don't my... tell me what you told them. That's hearsay. Is there a reason why his name wasn't listed as a person who was going to be moving no. in. Listen, Ms. Foston, if I were moving into a two-bedroom apartment, which is what you were moving into, and I had either never met or met once briefly another person who was gonna be living there, and that person showed up on the day that I was moving in, it would be irritating. Right. And Just I... a second. It would be irritating. So I want you to tell me so that this face believes it, when you dis on cross. Sorry. When you told your friend who was moving in with you, and not only moving in with you, but you had a kid that cries, that gets up during the night, so she was moving, and you were splitting expenses. 50-50? No. It was huh. split evenly between the three of us. When you first moved in, 
When did you and she discuss that? Um, prior to us moving in, she did know that we were all... No, don't tell me what she knew. When did you tell her? Because you started to tell me before, and you're going to read back to me. All the way at the very beginning, she started to give me some sort of story. He was going through some sort of trouble, difficulty where he was. It was going to be a whole... She said we were staying together. He was going through something legally, and at first we weren't going to move together. Do you remember you said that? Right. Thank you, Whitney. Um, I was originally going to sign the lease alone. I invited her to join my lease after she had get, gotten kicked out of where she was staying already. She was homeless, winter was coming, so me being a friend to her, I invited her to... Can I interrupt, please? I asked you a simple question. And I when did you discuss with her that your first name is Deshaun? Yes, ma'am. That Deshaun was part of the package. I he was all alone. No, no, no all along. I want you to tell me when. A date, like a specific date. It was before we moved in, so. So th let's hear the discussion. We talked about moving in together, signing a lease together, and you said, Deshaun is moving in with me, but in he's not time. on the lease. Yes. What was he going through? Um, he... What was he, remember what you just read? Yeah. What was he going through that maybe you were not going to move in together? Um, he had a Charge pending. What charge pending? Um, I'm not sure exactly. Yes, you are. I'm not. I had an, uh, a felony theft that's working on getting dismissed right now. So he has a pending felony charge, which is either a grand larceny or a robbery, because that's a theft, you know, theft of services, like when you jump a turnstile isn't a felony, not even a, something that they stop people for anymore. Okay. And that's still pending, so I'm not going to ask you anything about it. Is that the only thing you have pending? No, ma'am. Okie dokie. Excellent judgment on your part. That was, I was explaining Excellent what I judgment had on your part. This, uh, Let's move on. How old are you? I'm 22. 22. Super duper. That has nothing I'm not, to do I'm, I'm not, with... That didn't require an answer. It was a statement. <laughs> it is their claim that you purposely hit the side of their car causing damage. I'm going to see the video, and then you're going to explain to me your version of what happened. Okay, yeah. Great. L'Oreal Faustin and Dejon Johnson claim their former friend and roommate, Jasmine Stiegel, owes for a broken memorial and vehicle damages. Jasmine is countersuing, claiming Deshaun assaulted her. Now, okay, this is what your claim is about, because now I'm going to make really, really short shrift of this. Things didn't work out. Chuck, things didn't work out between the two of you. And it is your claim that when there was a fight between the two of you, she moved out. She says that not only was there constant fighting between the two of you, but I think somewhere in here, let me see in this answer, that they were constantly fighting, but she had had it when they started selling drugs out of the apartment. That's what she says. Yes, Your Honor. That's not just, true. Don't speak. I want you to tell me what you saw that suggested to you that they were selling drugs out of the apartment. Your Honor, you know, I work all day as a personal trainer. Um, so when I came home, I seen gambling in the kitchen, him and his friends, it was a whole bunch of people. I felt super uncomfortable. And it's just like, when I come home, I have to go straight to my room and shut my door. No, I, what I want to know and is... weed all on the table, full bags, pounds of full of weed and okay. smoke everywhere. So you're talking about bags of marijuana on the table. Yes. And he and his friends sitting in the kitchen playing cards and smoking. Yes. It's enough to move out. It is. I'm just telling you, it's enough to move out. And the domestically broken windows, just a and glasses. Okay. I'm here because she hit my vehicle with hers. Just a second. She's, just a second. She's You're broken. here because you say and that she, she broke the lease as well. That she broke the lease. And she hit my vehicle. Just a second. With hers. I know vehicle. all the components of your case. Now, I have not asked you. I'm going to ask him, because I don't know where you were. Now, were you and your friends playing cards in the kitchen? Listen, That's either a yes or a no. I don't even play cards, ma'am. No. Were you no. and your friends... No, no ma'am. 
You didn't even wait for my question, so I'm not going to ask the question. <laughs> Do you understand? Yes, ma'am. She had a right to move out. That wasn't when she moved out, and it wasn't the reason she moved I don't, out. Listen, that's a reason. That's a reason to move out. But it didn't happen. What didn't happen? You mean smoking weed? In, in your house? Selling weed out of my house, that did not happen. No, ma'am. Nor gambling. Nor smoking. You mean everything was fine in the house? Is that what you're telling me? You never fought with Deshaun. We fight like couples do. No, but no, 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 no. I never involved no, her in I, anything. I, no, there's a difference between physical fighting we and did screaming. We did not physically fight. Yes, because breaking. that's not the first time he put his hands on me. Actually, this is like the third time. So when they fought and I tried to break it up because my niece that I was claiming, that's her daughter, she was right there and she was just screaming for her life. So I just picked her up and then I went in there to break it up to try to, you know, isolate the situation and have them like go take their breaks from each other or whatever. And I even tried to talk to them. I tried to talk to her plenty of times. Like I sat there like, you know, are we good? Are we okay? Like what's going on? I talked to him telling him like, you know, your daughter is in his house. She needs to be around supervision. That is something that's going to benefit her. and She's going to grow up and be something, you know, not around all of this destruction that's going to literally destroy her childhood. Her I got it. I just, I just said that I believe you and the portion of her complaint that is charging you for breaking the lease and moving out, I'm dismissing. Thank you, Your Honor. That's it. Now, the next thing she has, breach of lease, is out. Damaged memorial. There was a fight in the house. Deshaun, I want you to think about this carefully. She came in with a property manager. Do you remember that? Yes, ma'am. Now, she had been in the day before because the day before is when she started to move all of her stuff out. Correct? Yes, ma'am. Good. So far, we're on the same page. And then there were some things she left behind, so she came back with the property manager. And you were in the apartment. Yes, ma'am. And you had other people in the apartment that were either your friends or relatives. It was my sister and her boyfriend. Did you answer the door, or did she just walk in with the apartment manager? Um, I answered the door. So you were at home also? Yes, ma'am. That means the baby was home. Yes. At some point when she was there to collect her things, Deshaun, the property manager left. Yes, ma'am. Because she's uncomfortable. Just uh, The property manager left. Yes, ma'am. When the property manager left Deshaun, had there been some arguing between the defendant, you, your girlfriend, and maybe your sister and her boyfriend? Had there been any arguing? That's either... Yes, ma'am. Okay. And the arguing was about what, Deshaun? About her belongings. She was trying to bum rush her way inside, inside the, uh, our home, putting her hands all in L'Oreal's face. Just, just, just a second. She came in with the property manager. Yes, ma'am. She came to retrieve the rest of her belongings with the property manager. Which was by the door in the one box of uh, hair products, barely anything. Who put them in the box? L'Oreal. Okay, so she decided what was hers and put it in a box near the door. Just don't, I'm not asking you anything. I'm not saying anything. Good. So your girlfriend decided what was hers in the apartment, put it near the door. Yes, ma'am. And she was there with the property manager, and she wanted to walk around the apartment to see if there was anything else there. But how... uh, how, Yes, ma'am. Right. And then there was arguing. That's all your stuff. That's all there is. Yes, ma'am. But I'm saying the reason why L'Oreal felt uncomfortable with her coming inside the apartment because my, also my niece was there as well. And um, she felt uncomfortable because of how she was going about the situation. Nobody knew if she was going to break anything else. Just a second. Listen to me carefully. Yes, ma'am. The property manager was there. He, the she pro- even walked she, away she because... The property manager was there yeah. because there was yelling going on. One person isn't yelling. One person isn't yelling. Is That's a psychotic person. Walks around the street yelling. Yes, ma'am. There was yelling going on from everybody. No. Really? Only one person yelling? Yes, ma'am. Well, why would she be yelling if she was going around the apartment looking for her things? She came to the door aggressively, banging like the police, like SWAT team or something. Okay. Gonna kick the door down. All right. All right. Let, let's... Okay. Early so the, the property manager left. After the property manager left... She was disgusted they, uh, just with her a actions. Your Honor, do you give me a chance to speak, please? Just, just, just a second. Okay. I have a case here that I really have zero interest in. Right. 
right? Right. I really have zero interest in the plant that got broken that has a value of $50 that had sentimental value for him because somebody signed the pottery. I'm really not interested in it. I'm interested in this case for two things and two things only. One, breach of lease, right. which I find that you had reason to breach. Two, money owed for damaged vehicle. Now, is that what you want to show me a video of? Yes, ma'am. Then I'm going to see it because at the same time oh, that nice. you came to get the rest of your stuff, the property manager left. It is their claim that you purposely left the house and in a fit hit the side of their car causing damage. Right. I'm going to see the video mm -hmm. and then you're going to explain to me your version of what happened. Okay. Do you understand? Yes, ma'am. Okay, and that's all I'm interested in. Okay, Your Honor. Great. Mm. Oh, yeah, you hit her car. Hit and run. No license as well. It's I didn't ask you a question. Now, you have to understand, that's mm -hmm. the only thing left in this case. Right. Is that video which shows your car hitting her hurt. car yes. square on and then going around it. I actually was kind of swerving when I backed out because he was coming after me. And I had anxiety. I, as you can see, I'm shaking right now. But he came running out and literally knocked me down from behind and started punching on me from behind and stumping my face out. That's how I got the sty in my eye. And then his sister came out after I got up and then we started fighting and then that's when he jumped back in and jumped me. And then I'm trying to hurry up and grab my stuff and my phone and my keys so I can leave. And they're right there all like literally surrounding me, trying to jump me and stuff, putting their hands on me. He's knocking me, hitting yeah, me. No, I never touched and then I'm I don't went run. back into the house. Just a second. I didn't ask you anything. I just wanted to make sure that you know that. Just a second. I didn't ask you anything. I'm here to tell you, you have lousy judgment. I can't tell you how many people have said to me, I paid it, it didn't have a stamp on the envelope, it didn't go through my bank. I can't tell you how many times, I can't count them on both fingers and toes. L'Oreal Faustin and Deshaun Johnson have accused their former friend, Jasmine Stiegel, of intentionally damaging L'Oreal's car. Jasmine claims she was assaulted by Deshaun. Okay, actually, there's only one person that I feel sorry for. I bet. And that person, the same person is who under had a year old. Another house. And that's under, that person is under a year old. And she's very well taken care of. She well, didn't witness any of this yeah, happening. And wonderful. I'm sure that that's why I'm Shh, I said to you, don't because speak. Because she was causing commotion but, in front of my kid, and that's why I actually I, leave. I want you to clearly understand this. She's not paying for the rest of your lease, and That's she's fine. paying to fix your car. You still have lousy judgment. Okay. Okay. Now, I saw the damage to the car, and now I'd like to see an estimate to have it fixed. Your Honor, I have all Don't the speak. Just estimate. Down. Sarah, I want you to look up the value of a 2015 Hyundai Sonata with 100,000 miles on it. Did you have insurance on this car? I did. Just a second. This cost to repair is $7,600. Did the insurance company pay you to fix it? No. That's what this says. Insurance it, pay. That's just the quote from the, um, oh, they well, wrote it out at well, the body shop. Just a second. Did you report it to the insurance company? Yes. Of course you did. And the name of the insurance company? Progressive. And did Progressive come out and look at the car? Um, no, they weren't. They said they wouldn't cover it. Show me a letter from them that said that they wouldn't cover Is it. Is it okay if I look in my phone? Absolutely. So an estimate for the 2015 Hyundai Sonata with 100,000 miles, it says 8,500 to 10,000. Okay, while she's looking for that, you have a counterclaim for assault. So my question to you is, after this incident that happened on the 12th, did you ever on the 12th, 13th, or 14th, seek medical attention? That's a yes or a no? No. Hmm. Did you take any photographs of your injuries that you allege you sustained on April 12th? Yes, right I'd here. like to see it. May I show you text messages about the car as well, please, of them taunting me? Of them taunting you? Yes. No, not interested. Okay. Did you find a letter from your insurance company? Um, no, they didn't send me a letter. 
I, it was a phone call. What I have is the claim number and everything, but I don't have an email from them saying that. They called me and told me that they wouldn't be covering it. What kind of insurance do you have on the car? Just full liability? Coverage. You have full coverage? Yes. Well, if you have full coverage, they should be paying for it with a deductible. Right. So what happened was um, my first payment, I had just gotten the car. So apparently my first payment, my initial payment for the insurance company, for whatever reason, it got sent back to my bank account. Um, so, so you had they just said a I second. Wasn't... So what you're saying is you had... I had to reinstate You had no account. insurance. And I didn't know. Just a second. I don't care whether you knew or you didn't know. You just got a car. I had and insurance you had... before I left off the And line. you didn't have insurance, because if you say you had full coverage, you had full coverage, but it wasn't paid. Did you have a loan on the car? Yes, ma'am. And despite the fact that you signed documents that said that you would have insurance on the car... Which I did. Which you did not. I did. No, you didn't. I fixed it that day. I got it reinstated as soon as I found out that this it wasn't covered. But when I left the lot, I did you, have insurance. Do you, do you understand I what I'm insurance. saying to you? Yes, ma'am, I had The insurance. day of this incident, which is... I mean, I've been doing this now. This is my 26th year of adjudicating so these kinds no, of cases. And I can't tell you how many people have said to me, I paid it, it didn't have a stamp on the envelope, it didn't go through my bank, and that is the time period when I had this accident. I can't tell you how many times, I can't count them on both fingers and toes, where there was a non-payment and a cancellation, of, because if there's non-payment and a cancellation of the policy, they always send you a warning. A warning. So you're going to have to suck part of this up yourself. You can't hit her car. Do you understand? Yes, ma'am. OK. Honor, she wants $7,000 to fix her car. I'm going to give her $2,500 because she can have this car fixed for five, and the other $25 she's going to pay herself because she didn't have insurance on no, something that she was supposed to have insurance, I have insurance on. I even offered to put her on my insurance because her vehicle isn't insured, and I can show you the text messages. Very good. Judgment for the plaintiff in the amount of $2,500. Your claim for assault is dismissed because you have no proof of an assault. We are, we are finished. Court is adjourned. I respect the judge once again. It's not even going to be enough to get it repaired now. He was just crazy, breaking everything, and he put his hands on me, so. She could have called the police or anything like that if that was true, you feel me? Even though it looks like I'm going slow and did it intentionally, but I really didn't. She just likes attention, and when it's not on her, she does what she has to do to get it on her. You know, I've tried my luck over the years with a few roommates, and living together creates a really stressful environment. So I sort of decided a smaller, singular place is better for myself, but we see this time and time again. People are best friends, they live together, a boyfriend comes along, a child comes along, and there's just too many variables to keep the relationship the same, and I think it's really unfortunate, but we've seen it yeah, more, more, more young people, I think for economics, mm -hmm. move in together as roommates, more so than when I was young in the Stone Age. But you know, it, the truth is, it's hard enough to live with somebody that you really love. Mm -hmm and make concessions for usually their foibles or their behavior, whatever. And then always there's a third party involved in that mix that gets sort of nasty. Mm -hmm. I agree with you, Sarah. I think living smaller alone is better. Yeah, I took your advice on that, yeah. and I don't regret it. One Justin Sky McCauley of breaking a breeding contract. Court come to order, all rise. Morning, Judge. Morning. Be seated, please. Case number 1031, Bonneville versus McCulley. Thank you. Miss Bonneville, in 2018, your old English bulldog had a litter of puppies. Mm -hmm. The defendant, who was your cousin, agreed to foster one of those puppies because you couldn't keep that dog in your home. It is your claim that he breached the contract with regard to that dog, and you're suing him for $10,000. You really don't want the puppy returned. The puppy has been with him since 2018. Still lives with you? Yes, ma'am. Right. So I want you to get that right out of your mind. After three years, I assume that you like the dog. She's my baby. And the dog likes him. And you really don't care about the dog. When was the last time you saw the dog? Um, A month and year. It would be... I shouldn't be so long was, ago. I'm sorry. It was it was August 2019. Okay. okay. If that's the case, that's a couple of years ago. And so when I say there's no way you're getting back this dog, 
So this is all about money. Now, when you gave Mr. McCauley this puppy, you drew up a contract with him. Yes. I'd like to see the contract. I have that right here. Just give it to me. Give it, well, give it to Kevin. Mm-hmm. Kevin good. will give it to me. Thank you. Okay. Now, before we get into all of the variables about this contract, why we're doing this, Sarah, take a look at this. Was this the first time in 2018 that you had had a litter of puppies? Yes, that was my first litter ever. You were the owner of the female dog? Yes. The female dog lived with you? Yes. So you had one dog at the time? Yes. Could not have two? I... I That's either a yes or a no. I was not able to have the second dog. Fine, which is why you gave him the dog to foster. Don't... Oh, sorry. Since 2018, have you had other litters with the same dog? Yes, Your Honor. How many? How many times? Was four other litters. Four since 2018. Yes. They can breed twice a year. You breed them twice a year? Yes. Just a second. I'll see the contract back. You breed this one female two times a year? Yes, Your Honor. Sarah, look up and see what's recommended for breeding. So this dog had three litters, no, six litters in three years. Her last heat, I retired so you breed her. Just, so you breed her every time she goes into season, which yes. is twice a year. Yes, Your Honor. Well, that's not right. I don't think. Maybe I'm wrong. The American Kennel Club states that the legal litter limit is six per lifetime for a bulldog, Your Honor. And how many times a year? I'll, I'll look it up. Look it up. I know. I've had many dogs over my lifetime and bought them from reputable breeders. I never knew a breeder that bred their dog every time they went into heat because the dog's body has to have time to nurture itself. I'm just telling you, I never knew a breeder that I bought a dog from that bred the same female dog twice a year. I just never did. Maybe I'm wrong. Sarah is going to continue her due diligence. It it just says recommended for the safety of the female dog to three to four total a year. It's impossible. They only go into heat twice a year. According to the American Kennel Club. Do you have dogs anyplace else, Miss Bonneville? I have one other female and one other male. They're both Old English Bulldogs. So that you breed those two dogs together? I don't breed them together. The male is in the same family. Let me read this contract. So this is a clear agreement, Mr. McCauley. It says, I, Sky McCauley, will be fostering Anne Bonneville's dog, Paris, from this date forward. Anne will retain all rights, including breeding and the right to take the puppy back at any time. Anne will take care of all vet visits. Breeding will be paid by one pup per litter. That was from her mother, not from the dog. You can't explain terms of an agreement if I don't have a question about them. Okay. I don't have a question about this. This says breeding will be paid by one pup per litter. And that suggests to me that you were going to retain physical control of the dog and the dog would be bred. And each time the dog was bred, you would get one puppy from that litter, either to keep or to sell. That's the plain language of this. <laughs> I absolutely understand what this says. Okay. So each of you claim that the arrangements in this contract were breached by the other. So let me go through them. You got the dog in 2018. Yes, ma'am. Well, from 2018 now to 2021, a dog like this goes to the vet at least once a year. Yes, ma'am. In 2018, did you take the dog Paris to the vet? Yes, ma'am, I did. And you have that vet bill? Yes, ma'am, um, I do. I'd like to see it. Please, we'll just bring Here them all go. to you. There's no question before you, sir. Just get me the These vet bill. all the vet bills. I don't want all the vet bills. Okay, sir. I want the vet bills from 2018. This is Kevin's exercise. He may have to walk back and forth two or three times. Okay. That bill for Paris was 134.38. Miss Bonneville, did you pay that bill? That's either a yes or a no. That bill was not paid by me, no. That bill was not paid by you. Okay, so if that bill was not paid, oh, that visit didn't take place in 2018. That visit took place in September of 2019. 
We waited approximately a year for her to take the dog to a vet, and she never Just did. Just a second. So that was 2019, and the plaintiff didn't pay. And at that time, in September of 2019, you hadn't bred the dog, nor had she asked for the dog back. No, we have not bred the dog. No. Okay. Do you acknowledge, Miss Bonneville, that in September of 2019, that the dog Paris had not been bred, and you had not asked for the dog back? That's either a yes or a no. Yes, Your Honor. Fine. So the dog hadn't been bred and you would not ask for the dog back. Did Mr. McCauley present to you or advise you what this bill of 134.38 was when he took the dog to the vet? He did not. Did you advise her? Yes, Your Honor, I did. Tell me when. I called her on the phone and told her that we took her to the vet, what the bill was, and she said that she would pay us with the next puppy that was supposed to be coming up from Princess. She would pay you with the next puppy? From Princess, not Paris. Okay. Did she give you a puppy for the no, vet? No, ma'am. She did not? No. Now, subsequent to this, did Princess have a litter of puppies? She did have puppies after that, yes. And did you, in fact, give him a puppy from that litter? That was not our agreement, and I did not. I did give him a puppy out of a prior litter. He got $900 for that, and I have a lot of communication about that in here. Okay. Did you get a puppy from a prior litter? I got a puppy the day I took Paris home because so it was to pay for the first six months of, of her being in my property. Of, yep. of care? Yep. Okay. Is that correct that he got the puppy the day he took Paris home? No, yeah. Or within a week of that? No, it was April following bringing Paris home. Well, what date did he bring Paris home? November 4th of 2018. And when did he get a puppy? April 6th or 7th. Of uh, what year? 2019. Well, that was before this vet visit, so that was owed to him. In the contract, um, Your Honor, it says I would give him a puppy out of Paris's litters, out of the well, dogs no, we were didn't talking say, about. No, it actually didn't say that. It didn't say it that. It didn't say that, but... It didn't say that. I am interpreting it that way. But clearly, you interpreted it some other way because... Before this vet bill became owed, you gave him a puppy. Now, you wouldn't have given him a puppy for which he got $900 unless you had some sort of an agreement. We had a side agreement, Your Honor. And what was the side agreement? The side agreement was I would give him a puppy to help with things uh, such as taking care of the dog. He had actually gotten a puppy long before he where, what we agreed on. Just a second. I understand that. I understand. Can I see in writing that he agreed to take this one puppy and take care of the dog forever and not make the dog his? I would just like to see it. Because right now, you've breached the contract by not paying a vet bill. So what I want to see is where you modified the agreement in April of 2019 that the one puppy that you gave him modified this agreement so that you were no longer responsible for any bills for the dog. Do you understand my question? And if you want it repeated, Whitney is going to repeat it for you. I'm, I'm Do you not want it repeated? Yes, please. Whitney, you want to read that back to the plaintiff, please? Question. So what I want to see is where you modify the agreement in April of 2019. The one puppy that you gave him in 2019 modified this agreement so that you were no longer responsible for any bills for the dog. I'm not saying that I wasn't going to give him any more puppies. Now, this, we're not talking about puppies. We're talking about money. Or money. I, I money. actually handed It says him. that you would take care of the vet visits. He had a discussion with you about paying the vet bill, and you declined. I had set up an appointment at my vet. I don't care about that. And You have to understand. Forward. I don't care about your vet. This contract doesn't say he has to take the dog to your vet. And later today. So you were raised by your grandparents. You always lived there. You didn't move out until 2011. Yeah. So their loss was hardest on you. Yes. I got it. Now I'm creating a family picture. Anne Bonneville claims her cousin, Sky McCauley, owes her for the value of a puppy. Sky is countersuing for breach of contract. It says that you would take care of the vet visits. So I gave him this puppy in... In, in April. In lieu of that, I, I sold the puppy and gave him the cash. Now, 
as far as I'm concerned, breeding dogs like this is more of a puppy factory than the care that you take in breeding dogs and not using them for money. Since 2019, have you given Mr. McCauley any money for vet bills? He's gonna show me the rest of the vet bills. No, the only, no, the only. The answer is either yes or no. No. Has he asked you for any money? The guy has not talked to me since October. Of I what have year? 2019. Okay. Did you tell her that you took the dog to the vet yes, again? Yes, ma'am. That was the last time I talked to her. That was the last time you talked to her? I have not talked to her in almost three years. And why is that? I don't associate myself with people like her. So I'm going to take this contract and disregard it because it sounds to me as if you knew as a pet breeder that animals have to be seen every year by a vet. He did say he told you about the first visit to the vet. I had set up an appointment at my vet. I don't care about that. And You have to understand, I don't care about your vet. This contract doesn't say he has to take the dog to your vet. This contract says you will pay the vet bills. Your claim is dismissed. Now we get into the counterclaim. Money losses resulting from a broken contract. Well, you have the dog, right? Yes, yes ma'am. Very good. Okay, action and punitive vagina resulting from defamation of character. Now we're gonna hear about that. Defamation of character. So first up, Your Honor, she went on Facebook. And does anyone know if a guy named Sky McCauley is here selling OEB Bulldogs? The mom is a dog he stole from me. Which then I had people contacting me, her coworker sent us okay. this saying, hey, you might want to look at this. It might be interesting. Her coworker seen it. And then it, we got oh, posted on nine different other websites. Does anyone know if a guy named Skull McCauley is in here selling puppies? Would that be 2019? That was, that was this year. This year? I thought he was breeding my dog without communicating anything with me. That's okay. I don't think, Miss Bonneville, that there's anything wrong with you asking the question, does anyone know if a guy named Sky McCauley is in here selling EOB puppies? The mom is a dog he stole from me. So you're calling him a thief, which is calling him a criminal. That you can't say. That's defaming him. Okay, this is the way I'm gonna move. Plaintiff breached the contract first by not paying the vet bill, so she gets nothing. And you have Paris. Yes, ma'am. And Paris had puppies. Never. Paris has been spaded. The fact that he's had the dog spayed suggests to me that he's not going to breed the dog and the dog is going to be a family pet, probably considering your breeding program is a blessing. However, even though she should not have used the word, stole my dog, which is exactly what happened, you have other things you want yes, to show? Yes, Your Honor, she went oh. around town posting my copy of my address as well as the contract on Beth's doors and telling them not to see any of my animals. Okay, well, we are going to give you an order today okay. that indicates that Paris is your dog. Okay, thank you. Okay, your counterclaim's dismissed. Everybody's happy, except me. Adjourn. Thank you. I believe that it was absolutely unfair and unjust. She's an abusive neglect cooperator. Everything he said is a falsification, and he got away with it. You know what that's an example of, Sarah? Even judges bring pieces of themselves to a case. We don't come with a clean slate. We come with certain feelings and emotions about things that are sensitive to. Mm -hmm. And I'm one of those people who were really sensitive about puppy mills. Mm -hmm. And they both got what they deserved, and I hope that he got what he wanted because mm -hmm. clearly he wasn't going to use this dog as a breeding tool for money. That's a very tough case. It makes me sad for all those animals that are bred in cages. Very sad. Case 1017, Williamson Jr. versus Williamson. All parties, please step forward. Frank Williamson is suing his sister, Cheryl Williamson, for the cost of tools and construction materials. Mr. Williamson, this is your sister. Yes. Your father passed away recently. Yes. What was the date of his passing? I don't know. I don't know Just exact a date. The answer is, I don't know I the don't date know. my father passed away. Do you know the date of your father's passing? May 22nd. Of what year? 2021. This is what the case is about. Mr. Williamson, it is your claim that there was a time when you moved in to your father's house. Yes. And your mother was still alive? Yes. My mom had a stroke. In what year did your mother have a stroke? 2005, 
When you moved into the house, had she already been ill? Yes. Who was taking care of her? I was. No, you weren't living there yet. I said, when you moved into the house, had she already had the stroke? You said yes. Yes. Who was caring for her before you moved into the house? My daughter. Who are you? I'm the granddaughter of... I'm his daughter. Okay. Stand up. Is what your raised hand suggests to me that you were living with your grandpa? I was living in a house until 2008 when my aunt moved in. Okay. So you were actually taking care of your grandmother. Yes. After she got sick? Yes. Was your grandfather okay? He had a heart attack and he was recovering and then she had a stroke. Sounds like you had your hands full. I did. Did you have any other help? No, my dad and my other aunts that lived in California at the time, they all came over occasionally to help out and relieve me so I can have some type of life. Okay. You lived there until what year? Until 2008. And continued to help take care of your grandparents? Yes. What about this aunt? Did she come to visit? She moved out here from Atlanta in 2008, 2009. And is that when she came to live at the house? Yes, and then that's when I moved out. And your father was still there? Yes. In 2008, your father was still there. What's your first name? Cheryl. Cheryl. So Cheryl moved in, you moved out. She sort of assumed whatever duties you were doing with then just your father, correct? Yes. Your Honor, I moved there in 2011. Oh, well. Got the dates wrong. Would that be right? Yeah. Yes. Okay, so you were actually there then for quite some time. I, I lived in a house since I was five. Did your mother live in the house? For a brief moment. So you were really raised by your grandparents? Yes. Now I got it. <laughs> so you were raised by your grandparents. You always lived there. You didn't move out until 2011. Yeah. So their loss was hardest on you? Yes. I got it. Now I'm creating a family picture. Do you know anything about the disagreements that started to exist between your father and your Aunt Cheryl? No. You don't know anything? I only know from the time when I moved back in, in 2019. That's when everything started to come to a head. I have a daughter and I didn't want her to be traumatized by any of the family drama. Very smart. (laughs) Your grandparents did a very good job. Thank you. They did. Good for them, good for you. Frank Williamson claims his sister, Cheryl Williamson, threw out his building materials. Cheryl is countersuing for repayment of a loan. Tell me why you've moved back in 2019. My grandfather ran into a wall and he was unable to drive and take himself places, so he asked me to come back to help him out to take him and his friends to the grocery store on the weekends. At that time, your father was still living there? No. What about Aunt Cheryl? She was there. What did she do in the house? She occasionally cooked and occasionally cleaned. Did you get along with her? Yes, I did. I actually love all of my aunts. Good. Okay. Mr. Williamson, I want you to tell me what happened when you decided to move back home. My father, he told me... Don't tell me. Just a second. Don't tell me what your father told you. Mm -hmm. Of course. Are you cold? A little bit. <laughs> I know it's freezing in here. I like it like a meat locker. <laughs> some, people get, some people get cold. This is your claim. Your claim is that you had discussions with your father, which I'm not going to get into because I can't verify them. And he told you that he wanted you to live in a guest house, that he wanted you to build behind the main house. So you bought a lot of tools and lumber. And... After your father passed away, your sister got rid of all of that. Did she dispose of the property before or after your father passed away? Before. 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 Ms. Williamson, you went back and forth to visit your grandfather? Well, yes, I live in a back house until the issue started to arrive. I have a daughter, and I didn't want her to be traumatized by any of the family drama. Very smart. (laughs) Your grandparents did a very good job. (laughs) Thank you. They did. Good for them, good for you. And Miss Williamson, when the property was disposed of, your grandfather and your father was alive. Right. He was occupying his own home. Correct. Okie dokie. Now, let's talk about your counterclaim. You can have a seat now, Miss Williamson. I'm not going to get you further involved in all this drama. Thank you so much. Oh, you're very welcome. <laughs> <laughs> you have a counterclaim.
counterclaim. Yeah. Your counterclaim is for loans that your father allegedly made to your brother during his lifetime. Yes. And you are the executor of his estate. No, yes. I am. You're the executor of his estate. No, he's not. May I see the documents that you have? And I'd also like to see a copy of your dad's will, please. Thank you. Okay, well, this is an old trust, sir. This is from the recorder's office. May I see it, please? So this document gives the defendant power of attorney. I just want to know if she could sue on behalf of the state for this alleged loan that her father made for you. So after you were granted the power of attorney, you went to court and changed the, the living trust? Yes. Got it. So let us assume for the moment that your father provided you with a power of attorney to sue on his behalf, and that was in 2020. Yes. When did you discover that you believe that your father made a loan to your brother? My father got a $30,000 loan, and he gave him $15,000. But as I look in this checkbook, he actually gave him $17,000. Just a sec. He took out a $30,000 loan. Yes. And he gave half of it to his son. Right. Mm -hmm. And he, he took, said... Just a second. And he's allowed to do that. Yes, but... When did you find that out? 2019. And so you knew about that in 2019, that your father had made a gift to your brother. No. No, he's... just a second. You said your father gave him... Well... $15,000. He took out a loan, and he gave him half. That he did was your supposed father... to pay back. I, I'd like to see proof of that. He didn't have him to sign a promissory just... note. Well, that's a problem. Miss Williamson. In his check account, it has... So what? Okay, I give my well... children money all the time. You know, it's so interesting that your father, who was clearly a lovely man and had a lovely wife, had a good life and accumulated some money and had a house, had two children who, after he's gone, are really destroying that good footprint. I don't understand that over some old tools and lumber and something that you cannot prove was a loan to his child. Well, I only can go by what he told me. You can't and go. I, I, told, I can't go by what he well, told I you. Well, I told my father, you shouldn't, you you shouldn't just, have done that. I don't care what he told you. This house that your father had, just curious, was it sold? No, I'm living in the home right now. Okay. And do you intend to stay there? Yes. And pursuant to the property settlement, what did your brother, if anything, receive from your father's estate? He just as... Just either. Nothing. That's a number. That's Zero. a number. Well, it sounds to me like you're living in the house that you didn't live at for a whole time. Where is your niece living? She doesn't live with me. I don't know okay. where she lives. Was she living there with her daughter at the time your father passed? That's either a yes no. or a no. No. Well, I moved out this year because I had to call the police because she kept changing the locks on the doors when I come home from work. So every time I would go home, when I try to get in, she'll change the locks. Got it. I got the story. That's not true, yeah. I got... I don't care whether it's true or not. You got the house. She'd been living there since she was five years old, and she's not living there anymore. She was, in fact, living there until your father died. No, she was living with her grandmother. My father asked me, how do you think about Yanika moving in? And I want to be nice. I want to say no. Okay. He raised her. He raised her. Miss Williams said, your case is dismissed. So is yours, okay. Mr. Williams. You got a house? Is it in your name now? Yeah. Good for you. We're done here. All right. Court adjourned. My grandparents would not want this fighting going on. We don't get along at all. I don't get along with my niece. I don't get along with him. I feel that family being here in court for this matter is ridiculous. I couldn't imagine fighting with any one of my siblings after not one, but both of our parents pass away. You know, there's a good lesson takeaway. Nobody likes to think about dying, but if adults are smart, no matter how old they are, they should have a document that is clear and unequivocal, that's called a will, that tells their children, their grandchildren, their friends exactly what they want done with their property so that we don't have siblings 
in a courtroom like this. And I think that all of that can be avoided if people act smart and create a goodwill.